Welcome back to Ghost Pirate Entertainment. I'm your host, Kanan Becker, and today I give you another 10 recommendations on Netflix. And let's get to the list. Answer me. Now you have to let me go. Return to your tasks immediately, or I will inflict pain. Cow is a 2018 sci-fi thriller directed by Federico D'Asandro from a screenplay by Noga Landau. It stars Maika Monroe, Ed Schreen, and Gary Oldman. A woman trapped inside of a genius's smart house must somehow get past the advanced artificial intelligence guarding her. What is this? Tao is one of the most advanced AIs in the world. He's an early version of the project I'm working on. This is a really great sci-fi thriller. I heard about it recently from one of you guys and I had never seen it. So I was like, well, I'm a big fan of Maika Monroe. I have really enjoyed a lot of the movies she's done lately. So I was like, what the hell? I'm gonna give it a shot. And I was pleasantly surprised. It's a somewhat small story as the whole thing takes place in just this one location. And it's really just two different people and then this artificial intelligent house. And it really just focuses on the dialogue and interactions between these characters. And that doesn't seem like it would be all that compelling. But surprisingly, it really gets intense and it really kept me captivated. I enjoyed this movie very much. And most of that is because Maika Moreau, she is just so good at holding the camera's gaze and just keeping you enthralled and entertained and just keeping you captivated in her performance. And Gary Oldman voices Tao, the artificial intelligence. And he does such a good job with this dialogue of just building this character of Tao little by little, which starts out as just this bland, emotionless, personality-less machine until the end when you're really rooting for this machine. This is a small movie, but a very entertaining one, and one that I think is definitely worth your time. Hush is a 2016 slasher horror movie. Directed by Mike Flanagan, it stars Kate Seagal, Samantha Sloylan, and John Gallagher Jr. The story is about a deaf writer who has retreated into the woods to live a solitary life, but now must fight for her life when a mass killer appears at her window. I'm a huge fan of Mike Flanagan. I enjoy everything that he puts his hands on, but this is one of his earlier works where he just directed it, didn't write it, and wasn't quite as involved in the making of it. But he really shows what he can do just simply directing a movie because the pacing and just the overall look and style of this movie, as simple of a concept as it is, he does such a fantastic job of keeping you just entranced this entire film. And Kate Seagal, who is in a lot of his projects, really Really shines in this because she doesn't hear anything and doesn't really talk so her whole performance has to be given through her expressions and then a little bit of texting that she does and things writing wise that she does on the computer but she just conveys so much through her facial expressions and body language this is an absolutely thrilling movie that'll keep you on the edge of your seat the entire time it is so exciting and just so, so intense. And even though at its core, it's just a simple slasher home invasion kind of movie, just the way that it's directed and performed and the polish that's put on it, on top of the fact that the sound is removed from this movie, really makes it feel fresh and different. This is a great little movie that's definitely worth adding to your list. Hellhole is a 2022 horror movie. Directed by Bartos M. Kowalski, it stars Petri Zolowski, Sebastian Staniquiz, and Olaf Leberzinko. Set in a Polish monastery, a police officer undercover, investigating mysterious disappearances, infiltrates a remote monastery, and discovers dark truths about its clergy. This 
This is such a cool movie. I discovered it for the first time last October, and I did do a full review of it, so definitely go check that out. But it's really just a lot of fun. It isn't anything super groundbreaking or extremely different as far as possession, supernatural, demonic films go. There's a lot of similarities to a lot of other movies that we've seen before, but it does have some unique twists and some unique flares, and it does go in some unique directions in general that give it a very different feel. But it is a bit of a slow burn, so you gotta kinda hang in there for about the first half hour or so, and it starts to build and build. But this movie makes it so worth it, cause the final 10, 20 minutes of it or so are just absolutely jaw dropping. Just the imagery, look and style of it is absolutely fantastic. This is a little talked about gem that I highly recommend. You're gonna have to run. Oh my God! What? The Ritual is a 2017 British horror movie directed by David Bruckner and written by Joe Barton. It stars Rafe Spall, Archer Alley, and Robert James Collier. The story follows four friends who go on a hiking trip into a Swedish forest and discover a mysterious ancient evil. We go southwest through here. We cut the journey in half. Or through the forest. I've become a big fan of David Bruckner ever since I saw The Night House from 2021. That was my favorite movie that year. And I really appreciated what he did last year in the new Hellraiser reboot. I just love his style and the way he makes movies look and just the overall atmospheric style that he tells a story in. But this movie has such an emotional core. It's absolutely powerful and heartbreaking at times, but then it's also scary as hell. And as the story goes, it gets more creepy and dark and disturbing. There's so much dread and fear that is built from the way it looks and the pacing. The cast also do a phenomenal job. This is such a surprising movie. You just don't hear enough people talk about it, but it is so masterfully put together and so well executed that it's entertaining from moment one. This is such a well done movie and one that I think is an absolute must watch. Raw is a 2016 French-Belgian dramatic horror movie. Written and directed by Julia Ducanau, it stars Garens Melier, Ella Rumpf, and Raba Nate Ophella. The plot follows a young vegetarian's first year at veterinary school, where she tastes meat for the first time and develops a craving for flesh. I absolutely love this movie. It's such an artistic masterpiece. It's uncomfortable and disturbing in every way imaginable while being just creative and artistic and beautifully shot. Just the performances, the imagery, the overall flair and style of it is just fantastic. There's so many moments of it that look like they could be a snapshot and turned into a poster. They're just absolutely gorgeous, but uncomfortable and disturbing. The way it handles gore is repulsive and yet strangely beautiful. And that's the way you can kind of sum up this entire movie, is the whole thing is beautiful, but also disturbing and very off-putting. But it's definitely a weird one and an art house picture for sure, so it's not for everyone. But if you're into artsy, foreign, indie horror, then this is one you absolutely need to see. You guys suck. The Babysitter is a 2017 dark comedy horror movie directed by Mick G and written by Brian Duffeld. It stars Samara Weaving, Judah Lewis, Hannah Mo Lee, and Bella Thorne. The film follows a lonely 12 year old boy who falls in love with his babysitter only to discover that she is part of a satanic cult that wants to kill him. I love her. 
This is such an entertaining, fun little movie. It's definitely not one to pick apart or to really put much thought into at all. It's really one to just relax, kick back, and have fun with. It's silly and over the top. It's super gory in so many funny, hilarious ways. And I absolutely love Samara Weaving. She is fantastic in anything that I've seen her in. Just her personality just flies off of the screen. And she absolutely carries this movie with just so much charisma and just one line after another that had me busting up. It's so colorful with so much flair and style, it almost feels like a music video. And each character in this has so much personality, even though they're not given much of a backstory, each one of them just really jump off the screen. And all of them really have good chemistry with each other. I think this is a great little popcorn horror movie that absolutely deserves to be on your list. But I cannot see it, even as I look right at it. I Am the Pretty Thing That Lives in the House is a 2016 gothic supernatural horror movie. Written and directed by Osgood Perkins, it stars Ruth Wilson, Bob Balaban, and Paula Prentice. The story is about a woman who works as a live-in nurse and suspects that her elderly employer's house may be haunted. I am 28 years old. I will never be 29. <laughs> This is such a quiet, disturbing, uncomfortable movie. It's very slow paced, so it's one you really gotta stay with. It's gonna kinda try your patience if you're not into slow burn. But it just slowly builds the dread and is done in this really beautiful, almost like poetry way. But as the story unfolds, it gets more and more compelling and captivating. And it gets to a point where it really sucks you into this universe. But there's this elegant, beautiful style about the way this movie is shot and how this story is told. There's a lot of fun little surprises and twists and turns along the way too to kind of shake things up. I think it's a really gorgeously done movie that not enough people talk about and I do understand to a certain extent because this is not everybody's cup of tea. But if you're someone like me who enjoys indie slow burn horror, especially the haunted variety, then definitely check this out. Gets Out Alive is a 2021 British horror movie directed by Santiago Maghini from a screenplay by Jan Croker and based on the 2014 novel of the same name by Adam Neville. It stars Christina Rodlow and Mark Mincheca. Desperate and without documentation, a woman from Mexico moves into a rundown Cleveland boarding house. Then unsettling cries and eerie visions begin. What have you seen? There's something wrong with this place. <laughs> What an interesting little movie this is. It has so many weird twists and turns and goes in directions you will not expect it to go. I've talked about this one a few times on the channel because I think as far as little known sleeper movies, this is one of my favorites, especially on Netflix because very rarely do you hear anyone talk about this movie. And it has this really small, subtle way of getting under your skin and creeping you out. The performance of Christina Rodlow as well, I think is absolutely fantastic. She really carries this movie. But the look and style and the way this movie is shot just feel eerie and uncomfortable the whole time. And on top of all that, the direction this movie goes towards the end in the final act is so surprising, I at least did not see it coming. And it is one of the big reasons why I really dig this movie, because anytime a movie can end in a way that sticks with me and makes me remember it, that's saying something because I watch a lot of movies and I've never forgot this movie because it just has this interesting way of sticking with you. Now don't get me wrong, this is a small movie, it's not anything groundbreaking, not anything with like wild crazy effects and all of this, it is a small simple story but it's really well executed, really well put together, and especially for a movie that you just don't hear anyone talk about. I think it's a movie that if you just go into it with an open mind, you will very much be entertained. So absolutely give it a look. This is Walter. No! The Burbs. I'm going over the fence, and I'm not coming back till I find a dead body. 
The Burbs is a 1989 dark comedy thriller. Directed by Joe Dante, it stars Tom Hanks, Bruce Dern, Carrie Fisher, and Corey Feldman. Settling in for some time off at his suburban home, a man's vacation becomes a horror movie when a suspiciously odd, seemingly evil family moves into the neighborhood. No one goes in, no one comes out. Neighbors from hell. This is such a great little comedy, and yeah, I know, this is a horror list, but if you've seen this, you know there's enough creepy, twisted stuff in this, very horror adjacent at the very least, that I can get away with throwing it on here. But if you're into funny comedy, but that has some creepy horror elements, this is one you can't go wrong with. The comedic timing of Tom Hanks and Bruce Dern is just gold, but this has some really weird, really over the top horror elements that I don't want to give it away in case you haven't seen it, but it goes way further into horror than you're gonna expect. But it also keeps you guessing the whole time on what is real and what is fantasy, because you're just never really quite sure on what is exactly going on. Is this all made up in Tom Hanks' head, or could it possibly be real? But it's just a very fun little story and a fantastic watch for anybody that just wants something to laugh at, but also still have some horror elements as well. So if you've never seen this treasure or if it's been a while and it's time for a rewatch, definitely get on it before it leaves Netflix and check it out. Nobody Sleeps in the Woods is a 2020 Polish slasher horror movie. Directed by Bartosz M. Kowalski, it stars Juliana Wienawa and Michael Lupa. A group of technology-dependent teenagers go to an offline camp and faces a deadly killer lurking in the woods. Did you know in Poland, 15,000 people disappear every year? A third of them in the woods? Yes, we're contributing to the stats this year. So this is a fantastic old school slasher. In so many ways, you can see it inspired from movies like Friday the 13th, but it's got the 80s kind of written all over it. But surprisingly, it has enough little twist and enough unique qualities that it doesn't feel like it's just a ripoff either. Because the dialogue and the cast have everything from humor to just exciting slasher goodness. The gore is great as well, and just the killers have this unique quality about them. They look unique, and the legend and lore about them is fun. I just think this is an absolutely great film if you're a fan of the 1980s slashers and want something different and new. In a lot of ways, this reminds me of the Hatchet movie. But this isn't anything to take serious. This is just a fun little popcorn slasher horror movie that is perfect for your Saturday night. So do yourself a favor, grab your popcorn and your candy and enjoy. All right, that's going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy this, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and ding that little bell because that is the best way to keep track of this channel and everything that I do on here. I also want to give a huge, massive, enormous thank you to the Ghost Pirate Army, to you guys over on Patreon because you guys mean so, so much to me and all the channel members here as well. You guys mean so much to me as well. And if you would like to find out how you can become a part of the Ghost Pirate Army on Patreon, there's a link down in the description. And if you want to be a channel member, there's a little membership thing right over here. And like always, thank you so much for watching. Please crush that like button. And remember guys, horror can be fun. If you enjoyed this, click right here to see 10 recommendations on Tubi. And I'll see you guys next time.